What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the Extended Cut podcast version of today's episode. I've really been enjoying leaning into the podcast a little more, being a little more thoughtful before hitting record about what's going to end up in that podcast episode that week that may not end up in my sort of tidy official version of the episode. And today, as we're talking about taking a values-based approach to building a fulfilling career in the podcast, you'll hear me share additional anecdotes and yes, rambles, (laughs) sharing some of my own experiences of my own career. So if that's something that you're interested in, you'll hear that sprinkled throughout while also still receiving the same content and tips that I'm sharing in the official version of this video. Today, we're gonna talk about a values-based approach to a fulfilling career, because it's it's what I felt like talking about today. This feels important to address because, I mean, who doesn't wanna have a fulfilling career, right? But also, I'm pretty sure for a lot of us who choose to become therapists, we're not just looking to make a paycheck, we're probably looking for some sort of meaningful career path. And yet, as we get into it, sometimes it can feel a little bit tricky to make that happen. So today we're gonna talk about how to utilize some values-based tools to build a fulfilling career. Now today, as I talk about taking a values-based approach to building a fulfilling career, I'm going to kind of mishmash together some loosely based act-informed tips into this video while also adding in some of my own kind of anecdotal life experience type tips as well. So I'm not gonna say it's officially an ACT approach to building a fulfilling career, but definitely for those of you who have training in ACT or acceptance and commitment therapy, you're gonna see some of those themes pop up in here. Generally speaking, a values-based approach focuses on identifying the individual's values. And I'd also add on like your own realities and constraints. So not just your values, but things like your personality, your skill set, your existing parameters within life, and incorporating all of those within your values in order to build a life that best fits you and the things that you care about. So I don't at all want to say, you know, a fulfilling career path looks like working this many hours or doing this kind of work or, you know, having some prescriptive approach to what fulfillment looks like because whatever fulfillment looks like for me is going to look different than what it looks like for you and different than the person next to you, etc. Because we all have different values, we all have different things that are important to us. So that's why I think no matter how you slice it, it's important to take a values-based approach to a fulfilling career. And that also helps clarify why, for example, in the baby boomer generation, there's generally more of an approach to career where it's a stable job that pays your bills, that enables you to lean into some of the other things that you value. Whereas for a lot of us in my generation as a millennial, an elder millennial somewhere in there, we often are focused on building a career that the career itself provides a lot of fulfillment those differences reflect values that come up kind of on average across different generations. As a sidebar, I'm really curious to see what sort of themes pop up for Gen Z as they step into adulthood and career age, what sorts of things on average Gen Z tends to value as far as career. And I wonder if it's gonna be similar or different to millennials. Anyway, that was just a big tangent to highlight how important it is to identify your values because that is gonna inform what a fulfilling career looks like for you. In this episode, I'm gonna share some very specific tips for how to identify and then apply your values towards a fulfilling career, but I kinda wanna give a preface on that first. Something I've noticed that comes up as a roadblock for a lot of folks while identifying their values and applying them to their life, including their career, is often we have a narrative of what we're supposed to or what we should value. I'm using air quotes around supposed to and should. So regardless of whether we actually personally value something, we can come into the question of what do I value and we start answering it by filling in the blanks of something that's been handed to us from elsewhere. Maybe it's something that's been handed to us from our family of origin or our cultural background or maybe it's something that's been handed to us from our kind of graduate school culture or colleagues, things like that. So I wanted to make sure I highlight that because it's very possible to come into this question of, you know, what do I value when it comes to my career and start saying things like, well, I feel like I'm supposed to value serving folks with this particular kind of need, or I'm supposed to value working this many hours for this kind of pay. 
And that may or may not be your actual value, but if you're hearing a supposed to or a should behind whatever your stated value is, then I encourage you to go back to the drawing board and genuinely ask if that's your true value or if you maybe inherited a value from somewhere else that's not really yours. And I wanna share a little personal anecdote to this point just for you podcast listeners where it can go above and beyond just, you know, I inherited this, like I should do things a certain way or I should value things a certain way, where personally for me, I grew up in a narcissistic dynamic in my childhood household where I was so entrenched in the narcissistic dynamic that I no longer was able to identify who I was, let alone what I valued. I wasn't able to identify personality traits. I wasn't able to identify my likes and my dislikes. I was fully entrenched and enmeshed in my narcissistic parents' identity for me. So even as an adult and even as a licensed psychologist in my late 20s, I still had trouble identifying what I truly valued because I was still very much enmeshed in that narcissistic dynamic without realizing it. So at that time, I had built a life and a career that I believed aligned with my values. However, there was a breaking point where I finally had to come to terms with realizing I've built this entire life that I actually don't love, but it just mirrors what I think somebody else thinks I'm supposed to love, (laughs) if that makes sense. And it took a lot of work, and I mean, I'm honestly, I'm probably just gonna work on this forever, but it took a lot of work for me to really de-identify, is that a word? Just really separate myself, individuate myself from that narcissistic parent and kind of for the first time discover myself and realize I'm a highly sensitive person. I don't do well with a you know three hour daily commute. Um, if there's anything I can do to minimize how many different people I work for or have to answer to in my work life, um, I tend to be more successful. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I'd basically built this career that was a terrible fit for me and my personality and my strengths. But at that time, if you would have asked me in my late 20s if I'd built a career that I loved, that was built on my values, I would have said absolutely Absolutely yes, but I needed additional supports in order to be able to truly identify how anxious I was, how unsatisfied I was with my life, and how disconnected I was from the present moment in nearly every aspect of my life. It was destroying my whole life, and I was also disconnected from my career. So that was a long-winded and maybe heavy tangent to acknowledge simply that it's not always the simplest thing to identify your values. I grew up in a narcissistic household, which made it incredibly difficult to know who I was and who I am. And there's a slew of other situations and experiences that can make it really difficult to identify our values. So If you move through these tips, or even if you're moving through some of these things in therapy or wherever else you may be attempting to get to know yourself and your values and you're finding it incredibly challenging, know that that's okay and you are in an important process. It's really worth getting to know yourself and it may take a little while to get there. So be patient with yourself if this doesn't feel so simple as it seems like I'm explaining it in this episode. All of that said, let's get into these tips for how to build a fulfilling career that's based in your values. Now, a lot of times what people do when assessing how to have a values-based approach to anything in life is they look at the situation right now and they also look at only that one variable. So if we were to say, how do you take a values-based approach to having a healthy lifestyle? Well, we might say, you know, I value having a healthy lifestyle. So I'm gonna, you know, eat these foods that I cook from scratch every day. I'm going to grow my own, I don't know, wheat and harvest it and process it into flour to make bread. And I'm going to exercise every day for an hour and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't take into account all the other values that we have in our lives. And so then when we try to just plug it into real life, it doesn't quite manifest that way. So when we take a values-based approach to any aspect of our life, we have to zoom out and look at all the different variables of life, not just our career. And I also suggest 
zooming out in your timeline so you're not just looking at the present moment, but you're considering your values across your entire lifespan and then seeing which of those values make sense to prioritize in this present moment. And then, you know, in the future, you might be able to prioritize some other values a little bit more. So the first step to taking a values-based approach to a fulfilling career is to zoom out and take a look across your lifespan and across all of your different priorities in life and ask what your values are there. So we're not just wanting to take a look at what your values are in your career across your lifespan, but also what your values are in your leisure time, your personal life, and your relationships. Now I know that feels like a really big question, because it is. <laughs> How do I look at my entire lifespan and ask what I value across the whole thing? So what we could do is imagine our future self, maybe when we're at retirement, if we're asking about career, or maybe just the end of our life. And then we ask questions about how those around us might remember us for each of those aspects of our lives. So for our career, we might say, you know, when I reach retirement, what would I want my former clients or my colleagues to remember about me or to say about me? And that's gonna tell you a lot about what you value as far as your career. Or if it comes to your relationships, maybe it's your family or your kids or your friends, what would you want them to remember about you or to say about you when it comes to the end of your life? And also asking that question about yourself. How would I want to remember myself and my life spent when I'm reaching the last years of my life? What sorts of things do I wanna say, like I did a really good job doing this or leaning into that? The answers to those questions are gonna tell you a lot about your values and it's a really helpful starting point as we get into the question of how to have a fulfilling career. The next tip is to zoom back into the present moment, this season of your life, and ask, how well am I living out each of those values in this moment? So you could do this kind of informally and just kind of reflect, okay, in career, how am I doing with that? in relationships, how am I doing with that? Or if you do well with a little bit of structure, you could use the ACT Bullseye worksheet. It's copywritten, so I'm not gonna post it here, but I'll put a link below to where you can find it if you wanted to give it a whirl. Basically, we're just assessing how you spend your time, your behaviors, and measuring those against your values and seeing, you know, what things are aligned with those values and what things don't quite line up. As you do that exercise, you're likely gonna find things that line up with your values, you're gonna find things that completely are out of alignment with your values, and then there's gonna be some things that are kind of in the middle where maybe you're just prioritizing some values over another. For example, maybe you just had a baby, <laughs> I've been there, and so you might be spending all of your time doing baby family things, even if you also across your lifespan have a value of being ambitious in your career. In this moment in time, appropriately so, you may be prioritizing a different value right now. So the goal here isn't to think about all of our values across the lifespan and then zoom in on the present moment and make sure that we're checking off all of those values appropriately right now in the ways that we're spending our time, but to spend some time reflecting on which values in this moment in time do I want to take higher priority and which ones are taking lower priority and how are my behaviors, you know, leaning into that appropriately. Like I can imagine a scenario and I've been there before <laughs> where maybe right now you're leaning more into the value of family and relationships because you got little ones running around and maybe someday you'd like to lean more back into being ambitious in your career, but in this moment you've decided that you want to prioritize family as your highest value but maybe there's still that narrative in the back of your mind saying, oh, Marie, you're supposed to be working on your career. And then instead of embracing the present moment of time spent with your family, you have this dialogue about all the things that you're not doing correctly because apparently you're supposed to also be doing career stuff, even though that doesn't make sense for your values right now. I think there was probably a more concise way that I could have said that, but Hopefully it made sense. So by doing the ACT Bullseye worksheet or just kind of assessing how you're spending your time and what values you seem to be prioritizing based on your behaviors, that can hopefully be a kind of anchor point to ask, you know, is the way that I have my life set up right now aligning with which values that I want to most prioritize at the moment? If the answer is yes, then great, more power to you. Carry on to the next tips. 
Or if the answer is, you know, something seems kind of out of alignment, doesn't sit right as far as how you're spending your time, then this is a great moment to really assess what values do I want to prioritize in this moment in time and include career in that question, of course, amongst all the other variables of your life, your personal life, your relationships, et cetera. So I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. That's the next tip to assess where do you want career to fit amongst the prioritization of your other values in this moment in time? And how do you want that to manifest? So not just how much time or effort do you spend towards your career, but what sorts of career values do you want to lean into at the moment? So for me right now, I have a long list of career values that I'd like to accomplish across the lifespan. Even if I spent all my time doing career things, I would not be able to lean into all of them in a single moment. But I also am hoping to prioritize family life at the moment. And I'm also trying to prioritize me stuff right now because I just spent the last, you know, four to five years of my life having babies and keeping them alive and kind of neglecting myself a little bit. So I have a lot of different values that I'm hoping to prioritize at the moment. And career is, is in the mix but it's definitely not like 75%, 90% of my effort and my time. It might be somewhere closer to like 30 or 40% of my intentions and effort and time. And within that 30 to 40% in my career right now, I'm hoping to focus on making sure I lean into my own professional development. I've mentioned recently that I'm 12 years out of grad school, 10 years since being licensed, um, and it's time. Like I need to get back on that that bandwagon. It feels very important to me to catch up on anything I missed over the recent years. And when it comes to private practice skills, which is about 50% of my career investments right now, the value that I really want to lean into is, you know, how do I utilize this platform that I have well so that future Marie, once, you know, private practice skills is like long gone, because, you know, I'm not going to do this forever and ever and ever. Sorry to break it to you. <laughs> but whenever it's in the rearview mirror, if I can look back at it, what's going to make me say, yes, I feel like I advocated for things that are valuable. I contributed some meaningful voice into whatever platform was available, and hopefully it was helpful <laughs> in moving the needle in a positive direction to whatever you know extent my influence went if that even made sense. <laughs> That's kind of the golden rule that I'm utilizing right now when I sit down to script a video. Today we're talking about having a values-based approach to building a fulfilling career, which does feel like an important thing to talk about. So that feels like it aligns. At this point in the process, I think it could be really easy to just say like, okay, now make sure you change your behaviors to align with whatever your stated values are, particularly the ones that you wanna emphasize in this moment and case closed, the conversation is over, you did it. But from my perspective, what I notice tends to happen for a lot of folks is we come up against a resistant narrative. It's not so simple most of the time as just like swapping some behaviors around and then feeling super fulfilled in our lives and our careers because we carry all these dialogues of like all the other stuff we think we should be doing, the other stuff we feel like we should be valuing that maybe we don't or somebody else seems to be valuing that we don't so maybe we're behind and we get into that comparison trap or we might be carrying narratives about things that we genuinely do value, we genuinely do care about, but in this moment in time, we're not prioritizing those values. So we're borrowing from a future state or a prior state where those values do get to take a priority. And that part of us is criticizing our present moment and saying, you're not valuing those other things. Like Marie a couple of years ago could have been saying like, okay, Marie, you gotta be focusing on your professional development or you should be building up private practice skills so that you can have an even greater, more positive impact on the world, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is a couple years ago, I was just trying to stay alive while keeping a couple of babies alive as my primary you know, value set in life. And if I happen to get anything career related done on the side, it was like, pat on the back, Marie, you're doing it. That was my stated values, but I still carried that narrative in the back of my mind. And so from my perspective, a lot of the work of building a fulfilling career or a fulfilling life for that matter, when we're taking a values-based approach to it is 
figuring out how to have healthy, helpful conversations and interactions with that narrative in our mind that's going, "Mm -mm -mm, Marie, you're not doing it right. Mm -mm, You're supposed to be spending more time doing that other thing that you also value or that so-and-so values or so-and-so told you you should value. And that is not helpful. That's not fulfilling to me to have that narrative always there. So finding tools to help you say, "Mm, I hear you. I hear you narrative giving me what you think is constructive feedback, but let me remind you right now, these are the values I'm leaning into. And that might mean that so-and-so over there is, you know, they've lapped me several times on whatever values they're leaning into and kudos, good for them. And I have these values over here, which means that maybe I've pushed the brakes on my career, or maybe it means that, you know, maybe it means I'm pushing the gas on my career right now. And there's some other things that are getting deprioritized in this moment. And that's okay, that's what I'm choosing, that's what best aligns with my values. That practice is really difficult (laughs) to take on. So I'm gonna emphasize it here, that if you're already living a life in alignment with your values for this moment in time, I encourage you to find healthy, appropriate tools to embrace that, hold space for that, celebrate it, you're doing it. <laughs> like find, find ways to cheer yourself on. And that leads to my last tip, and that is to find people in your life who will fully embrace and support you leaning into your values. It's great if we can find people who share a lot of values, but what I've found for me is I'm such a multifaceted person that I tend to have difficulty finding a single person who shares all of my values equally because we're all individual and unique. And maybe also because I'm a four on the Enneagram and I feel like I'm just such a unique unicorn, whatever it is. (laughs) Hopefully I can find enough different voices in my life who embody different values. So I have a lot of stay at home mom friends and I have a lot of friends who are really ambitious career women um, and they scratch different itches for me. And I'm somewhere in the middle. I value both. Well, I mean, I work full time. I don't know what to say. I guess some part of me still identifies with the stay at home mom values, even though I now have full time childcare. So maybe I need to process that a little more. I did that for a while. I was at home with my girls a lot for their first years in life. So, okay, well, there's Marie's. We all have things to process, embrace it. But all that to say, If you can find some like-minded folks who at the very least validate you and your values and bonus if they share some of those values with you, I found for me at least that makes it so much easier to kind of self-soothe when that argumentative, combative narrative comes up that says, Marie, you should be doing more of this other value. And it's like, hey, my friend so-and-so sees me and they're they're doing the same thing I'm doing and I admire them still for that. So I'm gonna embrace that for myself. Or, you know, my friend so-and-so cheered me on and said what I'm doing is great. <laughs> or my fellow therapist or my consult group folks or, you know, wherever you're finding that support from. So embrace people who embrace you, I guess. And let's say you followed all of these tips and you've identified the career route that makes the most sense for you and it involves doing some pivot or whatever the next behavior is and the steps of choices to help you lean into that value. If you find that you're coming up against a wall of resistance, like I said I was gonna launch my website two months ago and it's still sitting unpublished or you know whatever the thing is. If you're finding that you're getting hung up on one of these steps, rather than judging yourself for it or writing the whole thing off, I encourage you to get to know the resistant side of you. It's probably some part of you that is either advocating for a value that you haven't noticed yet or maybe it's advocating for a need that hasn't been addressed yet or something else that's really important to you, tend to and nurture And you may be able to just still move forward on that same path that you'd set out for yourself once you tend to it, or maybe it just needs a little reroute or something else to help you feel like 
all of you is ready to go aboard the train of fulfilling career that you've decided for yourself. So, um, and if you want some tips on resistance, I made a video last week about that. So you can check out that video because those tools are just as helpful in my own internal dialogue as they are for, you know, when I'm working with therapy clients who bring up resistance. So you may find them helpful too. Well, whatever the reasons are that you decided to click on this episode, I hope you found this helpful and supportive and validating. Maybe you picked up some new tips or maybe you just feel supported in the path that you've already chosen for yourself because it does align with your values. Well, I hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride of this episode with me today. It is indeed what I felt like making today. That is what I'm embracing for this season of private practice skills in my career. So I hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well.